Hi, I'm Dr. Ian Sawyer. I'm a postdoc working in the lab of Dr. Miroslav Dunder at Rosalind Franklin University of Medicine and Science. And in this video, I'm going to summarize a recent hypothesis article that I co-authored in bioessays entitled Cahal Body Function in Genome Organization and Transcriptome Diversity. The impetus to write this article arose after we published a primary research paper in Nature Communications on this topic in March 2016. The work in our lab is focused on understanding how the cell nucleus is organized and how this organization contributes to genome function. In particular, one of our guiding principles is understanding how chromosomes are folded to fit two meters of DNA into a 10 micrometer diameter cell nucleus. Now, chromosomes are not loose structures in the cell like spaghetti, but rather more like balls of wool, which are folded and confined to their own distinct territories. In the gaps between these territories, known as the interchromatin space, are highly active genes that have looped out from their respective territories. This space also contains small but physically distinct structures known as nuclear bodies, and these are rich with specific proteins and RNAs. These regions frequently associate with specific target genes to perform various nuclear functions. In particular, nuclear bodies are associated with RNA and ribonucleoprotein, or RNP, production, but they also perform other functions too. It is the interface between the genome and one of these nuclear bodies, known as the Cajal body, that we are particularly interested in. The Cajal body is a prominent one micrometer diameter structure that exclusively resides in the nucleus and lacks a defining membrane. It is known to form at sites of small nuclear RNA or snRNA gene expression. Here it catalyzes the processing, base modification and packaging of nascent snRNAs into fully functional mature snRNPs or SNRPs. These mature SNRPs are then trafficked to another nuclear body known as the nucleus speckle, where they catalyze mRNA splicing as part of the spliceosome at the periphery of this structure. The Cajal body also catalyzes the reassembly of several SNRPs after each round of splicing. Our Nature Communications article described the genome-wide Cajal body chromatin interface and its effect upon small RNA expression and mRNA splicing fidelity. We found that Cajal bodies are frequently associated with, and potentially nucleated by, large tandemly repeated snRNA gene clusters particularly the U1 snRNA gene cluster on the p-arm of chromosome 1. After formation, Cajal bodies induce a topological rearrangement of chromosome 1 by retaining target snRNA, small nucleola or SNO RNA, and histone genes, as well as both chromosome ends in its proximity. Cajal bodies simultaneously associate with many target genes that are located on different arms of chromosome 1, forming a rosette-like structure around the body. The formation of Cajal bodies also increases the frequency of interchromosomal snRNA gene associations by attracting these genes to its periphery. We observe a significant difference between snRNA gene associations with the Cajal body compared to nearby control regions that have far lower levels of snRNA gene density, particularly on chromosomes 1, 6, and 17. These chromosomes contain the U1 and U2 snRNA gene arrays, as well as the major and minor histone clusters, which are all regulated by Cajal bodies in some way. Not only do Cajal bodies form these clusters, there is strong evidence that they cause a positive feedback loop that further enhances transcription at target snRNA genes. In fact, Cajal bodies are rich with specific snRNA transcriptional and processing factors, including components of the snRNA activating protein complex C, SNAP-C, the little elongation complex, LEC, and the integrator complex, that might help to boost the expression and processing of target genes in the Cajal body periphery. However, this isn't the end of the story. As Cajal bodies regulate spliceosomal SNRP levels, when the structure is disassembled using specific siRNAs in cancer cells, we observe a decrease in mRNA splicing fidelity. Thus, the Cajal body is capable of influencing the cellular transcriptome by regulating small RNA diversity in cells, small RNA modifications, as well as protein encoding mRNA splicing accuracy. So, in summary, Cajal bodies are optimized subnuclear structures that make gene expression and RNA processing in the cell nucleus more efficient. They achieve this by accumulating specialized cellular factors and attracting specific target genes to small localized microenvironments. This regulates small RNA and mRNA transcriptome dynamics, 
with potentially interesting influences upon diseases where cacao bodies form, such as cancer. I'd like to thank my co-authors, Dr. David Sturgill and Dr. Gordon Hager of the National Cancer Institute, Dr. Mia Sung of the National Institutes on Aging, and my mentor, Dr. Miroslav Dunder of Rosalind Franklin University for their contribution to this work. We'd also like to thank BioEssays for publishing our review, and finally, you for watching this video.